Four years ago, developer Kyoken Interactive released a cool little game called Deliver Us the Moon. An atmospheric sci-fi adventure following a lone astronaut who's sent to the moon on a mission to avert humanity's fate towards extinction. Apparently the resources have been depleted and the moon must be ripe for the picking. Maybe they're looking for cheese or something. Anyway, it's currently the middle of summer here in Australia. I'm sweltering in 40 degree heat, and by some weird alignment of the planets, I get handed the sequel to this game, which is about escaping the current heat death of Earth and wandering around Mars for a little bit. And you better believe that I'm ready for some escapism. Deliver Us Mars is an atmospheric sci-fi adventure much like its predecessor, a suspense fueled high stakes mission to recover the Ark colony ships stolen by the mysterious Outward, and with them ensure the survival of the human race. But will this game be the space odyssey reimagining that I've always been looking for, or will it make me want to throw myself into space where no one can hear me scream about it? Let's put this one through its spaces and find out. Welcome to Koshify. My name is Koshi, and this is Deliver Us Mars. Having good intentions isn't hard, Kathy. The hard part is knowing the difference between what's right and what's wrong. We have to leave. I will not risk the success of this mission. How do you stay strong through all of that? How do you stay? Dad! Good. Now, before we get into it, if you want to see more reviews like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll be reviewing the PC version of this game with a code provided by the publisher, so thanks very much for that. After the lengthy opening prologue that sets up the story, we can finally jump in and play the game. Deliverous Mars does a good job of using the show don't tell method of storytelling, which sometimes left me with more questions than answers, all while intriguing me more into its story. The opening scenes show a once loving family enjoying a weekend together, juxtaposed with waking up from cryo sleep and trying to escape a futuristic facility with your father. It's the perfect way to hook you in. Watching your father jettison off into space for reasons currently unknown to us just left me wanting to know what the heck was going on and I was ready to find out more straight away. The visual storytelling is right there from the get-go to draw you in as well. The prologue shows a nice loving family at their house on the water where the parents are all cutesy and the kids are happily playing around together. It was at this moment that I knew this was going to change, and quickly. After Dad heads off into space to get milk from the 7-Eleven on Mars, we are skipped ahead in time to see the character Kathy fixing up some kind of antenna. After being able to look around and see the current state of Earth, it's not a nice place to be, and you can take that in straight away. You make the immediate connection that the sea levels have risen dramatically, and this is having a massive impact on the world in which Kathy lives. But the best part is they don't have to tell you that it's actually happening. This is just normal Earth to them, and they are trying to live their lives as best as they can. Roads are difficult to navigate, land is restricted, everything is just displayed as the harsh reality that they're currently living in. While the performances in the cutscenes and general banter between the characters is engaging enough to listen to, especially as you get into the peak moments of the game, there are some standout misses that are quite noticeable. We have a section about two hours in in which Kathy is desperate for oxygen and is running around carelessly saying, oh, I need oxygen, in a delivery that is as flat as a cutting board. Upon being able to luckily find some manner of oxygen, which last time I checked is quite important for survival as a human, Kathy lets out a Wait, the station replenished my oxygen. What? How is there still oxygen here? Like, bitch, you almost died, don't question it. Okay? This doesn't happen too often, but when the story and the performances are the thing driving your experience, it's something to note that takes you out of that experience fairly quickly. Also, strap yourself in for some popcorn because the first two or so hours do feel like an interactive movie where you walk from one scene to another. You'll solve a basic puzzle that'll teach you some of the technologies used and then more difficult version of that puzzle further along, but all this is broken up by minutes upon minutes of cutscenes. While they are mostly good cutscenes and they are there to tell a story about love and lost amongst family, you just need to be aware of what you're going to be getting yourself into. Players of the first game may already know this, but I hadn't had the pleasure. With that being said, it would have been interesting to see what the playtime would have been if the cutscenes were skipped completely. 
Outside of the cutscenes though, it can tell a very different story from time to time. When you're exploring in third person, listening to characters banter back and forth, or when Kathy has a cute moment with her bot Ayla, it really lets the performances of the characters shine. The writers and actors are really trying to put in the work, attempting to tell a thrilling story and I think the entirety of the game is pulled up dramatically for these reasons alone. And I say this because there are a few things dragging it back down. First off, it takes a while to actually deliver us to Mars and actually just find out what the hell is going on. With an average completion time of around 8 hours, we've spent 25% of it not even on Mars. With that being said though, there are some cool elements of the game sequences that I enjoyed up to that point. If you're a fan of space or rockets like every other child at heart, being able to complete pre-flight checks for a rocket and go through the motions of a space station docking maneuver or an EVA suit flight outside your ship to cut off debris felt pretty cool to experience. But it is all sequences. One of the other major mechanics in the game is your typical walking simulator mix of climbing rock faces and other vertical surfaces with your dual cliff hooks Lara Croft style. You do this with the left and right mouse buttons being independently controlling each hook and then using WASD to move around Kathy's body weight. Initially I felt this was a pretty immersive mechanic that allowed me to feel like I was actually climbing a wall which was nice to experience. After the 30th failure to attach to the next wall though, it did become slightly tedious to labor your way over each wall face click by arduous click. One false move and you're there with the timing messed up, usually meaning your death and starting the sequence over again. Not helping matters either was the inconsistency of actually attaching with the hooks when jumping at a wall or transitioning between walls. Sometimes you'll be falling too fast to grab on so it just bounces off, other times you'll press the buttons at the wrong time bouncing off non-hookable section of the wall and that has you plummeting to your doom and so on and so forth. While this mechanic does help to break up the walking sequences, I would have liked to do something different than just what amounts to vertical walking that I need to click for each step along the way. Once Kathy is on Mars, the overarching story of the various characters takes place through holographic cutscenes with snippets of text messages to collect along the way. Depicting this leader of this arc civilization landing on Mars, struggling to maintain the utopia that he thought he would bring, and showing that maybe not everything is all hunky-dory on this little born-again voyage. To help flush out the world slightly are these small interactions that some of the crew members have stored around various locales. While collecting these text message conversations is a fun little look into the events that transpired here previously, it would have been nice to see Kathy actually have some kind of reaction to any of these pieces of information. There's one quick tidbit where someone has smuggled some media tapes in and they were looking to do a secret movie night. It felt like it was quite cute to see that this small interaction between two people and then Kathy slowly but surely says, better note this down. Oh, okay, noted. This line repeats a lot of the time when finding these little notes, which showed that they really weren't there for Kathy to find, and it felt like they were instead meant for the player to find, to find that 100% completion. Maybe other games have ruined this for me, but it did break the immersion of exploring a new planet and a civilization that lived here before the character did. Unfortunately, if it's not involving her dad or the people that are actually talking in this game, she treats them like a blank piece of cardboard. As I've mentioned previously, pulling up the rest of this game for me is the story, and I feel like it really is the selling point of Deliver Us Mars. The game doesn't shy away from the characters having intense moments of loss, and moments of beauty when the time demands it. The story brings people together, showing just how much they can achieve when they're fighting for something like the entire fate of the human race. It's kind of important. A story where we can feel the effects of one man's decision five or even ten years later, realizing that while good intentions can be there, ultimately it's up to making the right decision when it matters most. While I don't feel the gameplay really matches up with the theme of the story, the full cutscenes and the in-game holographic sections do add a lot to the drama of it all. Fleshing out characters with their motivations and allowing you to develop an understanding of people's perspectives in a multi-minute long snippets, it really helps to flesh out the world. I don't think space opera is the right word for it, but sometimes it feels pretty close. Daring jumps and climbing through crumbling remains of a society or a wrecked spaceship with intertwined character plots, laser powered stream tech and everything in between. Unfortunately though, it's not a perfect experience and throughout my playthrough it showed that the game mate may not have been ready to be released yet. There's a story moment about four hours in where Kathy sneakily discovers something about her other parties with her bot Ayla to help out. After this small sequence, I was wondering how she would react to this discovery the next day, and maybe what Kathy's plan would be going forward. How would she deal with it? Apparently, the game took that and threw any tension out the airlock because there's a small time jump and now Kathy is just in a rover on her own. 
just driving off in search of her dad once again into the Mars horizon. It definitely ejected me out of the story pretty quickly, and I feel like there was a whole sequence missing that was possibly cut for time. Aside from this jarring sequence though, there was always something that continued to drive me from one mediocre gameplay sequence to another. It was able to push me to find out more about the story, and it's a story filled with gut punches too, so you better be ready for that one. It's only slightly off-putting that the main rotation of gameplay is so bland. While there are some simple puzzles to solve here and there, the story, the world, and the characters did hook me in enough even with the terrible facial modeling that you may have already noticed throughout the video. For me, everything else around you is set in a realistic setting with a realistic art style, and the facial modeling flat out broke the immersion for the game at times. Things like facial expressions that didn't come across correctly with the tone that the voice actor was portraying, or just lack of emotion in general. The general modeling of the faces with this shiny Play-Doh aesthetic left me borderline uncomfortable during the face-to-face -face cutscenes. And there are a lot of these as well. Adding in this odd depth of field effect as well that played up occasionally meant that I had trouble focusing on what was going on at times. Oh, you're okay. We had a really rough landing. Flared up a whole injury. You're not. I said I'm fine. Ah. We need to find some meds. Get the RPO. I really need to harp on these models for just a little more because it really took me out of the game. While we get an inkling that Kathy is under the age of 18 or 21 because she isn't allowed to drink alcohol and her sister Claire must be older than her from the original cutscenes, all of the characters' models look like they're basically children, maybe teenagers. And yet these are Earth's best hope? Multiple uni degrees, best in their field, the only trained astronauts in 2069, and they all look like they're about to finish high school and head to their first prom night. The smooth over faces that are absent of any detail or expression leave everyone like a blank canvas where only the hair, skin or eye colour really allows you to tell the characters apart. And that's with the characters that actually seem plot relevant or have any voice lines, let alone talking about generic NPCs. When arriving at the WSA facility, you run into your first NPC characters and they're just models that stand there, going through the same motions over and over without any life. I think the developers added them in to not make these massive areas feel so empty, but if they don't actually do or say anything, even a single line of dialogue would have been better than the absent stare of these character models. Like, look at this reception type character. Like, that's the face of a model that's had the Snapchat baby filter added to it, I swear. With around 8 hours sunk in to Deliver Us Mars, which I played to completion, it did feel like an interactive story at times that just needed a little bit more polish to get right. But with a short enough playtime, I think it's worth sticking around for, just to see what goes on in the world you're exploring. Hell, I've put 100 hours into Persona 5 twice, and I think the combat in that game is the weakest part, so this was a cakewalk through space for me. If you're looking for a story packed with feeling and characters that have plausible motives to dive into, I can recommend picking up Deliver Us Mars. While the weird face modeling, the lack of polish, and the walking simulator gameplay would normally put me off, the writing and performances were enough to push me through to the next chapter time and time again. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe for more reviews like this, and pinch that like button's bottom, and check out my podcast Redundant Opinions over here somewhere. Let me know what you know down below, and I'll see you again soon. Until next time, Goshi. Out.